Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Kavinsky's Tutorials. Today I'm looking at Polyphase by Marcus Kohler. And if I had to choose just one desert island generative MIDI app, this is probably what I would choose. It's really fantastic. So I'm going to do a really, really deep dive into this today. This video could easily reach an hour, but it will be an hour of your time extremely well spent because this is just a fantastic tool. Um, first, I'm going to let you hear a few examples of it. And then after that, I'm going to talk about why you would want to use something like this. Actually, yesterday in the Audiobus forum, a developer was asking that very question. He said, I don't really understand why people like these kind of apps. So I'll discuss that. And then I'll go and do a detailed walkthrough video of all the features of the app. So if you watch this whole video, you'll understand fully how to use this. There might be a few small little details in some little menus here and there that are just too dry to go into that I won't go into. But by and large, I will cover this very, very thoroughly. Before I do anything, let me just mention that I've got five copies of this to give away to subscribers to the channel. And all the details of what you need to do to win are in the pinned comment section. This is only available to subscribers, but if you're not a subscriber yet, you can subscribe now. No problem. Okay, so let's listen to a few examples. So, the first example, I'm actually going to send MIDI from Polyphase to a desktop synth called Plasmonic. So I'm using Duet Display over Wi-Fi to view my desktop screen on my iPad. And I'm sending the MIDI from Polyphase into this synth. And then I'm sending the audio back from my Mac via my audio interface to my iPad. So let's just look quickly at how we do that. Just give me a second. So on your Mac, in the Utilities section, there is something called Audio MIDI Setup. You go in there, you go to Window, and from there you open up this thing called MIDI Studio. You just choose Show MIDI Studio. And then you go over to this arrow over here, and you click on Configure Devices, and go in and open Bluetooth Configuration. And then you'll get something like this that opens. And here you can enter a name for your Mac, and then you advertise it. And then on your iPad, go into something like this, uh, connect BLE MIDI, for example, and just connect to your Mac. And then in polyphase, you go to this MIDI part here. And if necessary, you refresh interfaces to get it to show all the available interfaces. And then you make sure that these four things are sending out to your laptop over your Bluetooth connection. Okay. So let's have a listen here. Polyphase is doing these chord changes itself. I'm just doing a little bit of real-time transposing. Check another example. I'll use something on my iPad this time. So we're going to listen here to Ravenscroft. Got a couple of instances of Ravenscroft that are getting their MIDI from Polyphase. And I've put Yale D 
reverse delay on one of those. And I've turned off Ravenscroft's reverb and I'm using Alteza. Let's get another example. So here I'm using Add Station. And it's nice to transpose that and make it high, and then record something in Gauss. And then put some trigs on it like I did here. And a shit ton of delay. I love bell sounds with this kind of thing. Okay, so let's um, let's look at the app itself. Now, if you can see here, Polyface has crashed, and this is an issue that I've been having with the app, and I do want to mention it, and I've told the developer about it. Basically, when you're switching between other apps, you do sometimes get problems where Polyface crashes, and this is definitely an issue that needs to be fixed. Let's reload. Okay. Now, as I said at the beginning, one thing I want to address is why you would use an app like this. So, I mean, a lot of reasons. Uh, there are some musicians who think that it's not music unless you make it yourself. I think that's a really, really old-fashioned attitude. So people like Brian Eno, right, have talked about this, and he had a vision of the musician more as a kind of curator. Um and your taste becomes more important than your technical ability. And I personally agree with that. I love writing songs on guitar, I sing and play guitar, but that's a totally different kind of thing. I also really, really enjoy working with these machines, working with these AIs and tools like this, seeing what they produce, and then helping to guide it and shape it. It's extremely satisfying. Um, another thing is... You can actually learn a lot about music from apps like this. So this has built-in scales and keys that you can filter the notes to. It's a really good way to learn about different types of scale, what they sound like, different chords that sound good in different types of scales. Um, another way you could use it is, for example, if you're not a good musician, like I'm not a good keyboard player, you're not a good musician, um, but you want to produce beautiful music, you know, let this do it for you. Or, for example, especially during the pandemic, maybe actually you play an instrument really well, but you don't have people to jam with. Apps like this can be really good to get a background for jamming. And they're just fun, you know, there's a lot that you can play around with here. It's, it's, a, it's And it's got a beautiful interface as well, this app. Uh, definitely one of the best, I think, of any generative MIDI app that I've come across. Um, I've done videos on a bunch of different apps like this. I've actually got a playlist, I think, called Generative MIDI or something like that. So you can go and take a look at that playlist. Piano Motifs is another very good app for producing beautiful melodies. I also did a video on Riffer recently. But um, Riffer is great, but it's very, very different in style from Piano Motifs. Let me let you hear an example. Now... First thing I want to show you actually 
before we look at Riffer is how to sync polyphase to your DAW's host. This is something that uh, a lot of people would have problems with, I think. So we go into polyphase and let me do that again, actually. Ah, okay, crash. I've had a lot of problems with this app crashing, actually. So I've already said uh, to Marcos, the developer, um, you know, you really need to do beta tests. If you're making apps for iOS, the developer's use cases may not be the same as users. And it's really important that you have a good team of beta testers, ongoing beta tests, because iOS just changes so much and it's really easy for things to get broken. So I'm saying this not just to Marcos, but to developers in general, because I find that a lot of developers are not beta testing or they do a beta test, beta test with like two, three people. That is not enough. That is not enough. You need a good team of beta testers, everybody. Because otherwise you're using your customers as beta testers. And for me, for example, I spend a lot of time figuring out new apps and stuff. I get really tired dealing with bugs. So please, everybody, lots of beta tests left, right, and center. Okay, so let's look first of all at how we set up polyphase in AUM. So what we do in polyphase, we go to MIDI and we turn generate clock off, right? So the default will be like this and you have to press it so it's like this. And then what we do is in AUM, we go in, we click here, and then we click on these three dots. And here we click on send MIDI clock. Now by default, that will be disabled, but we click on enabled. And then we click here, turn it on. So when you do that, you'll get this warning, but you'll just choose OK. And then here you choose your destination and you'll also get a warning and you just choose OK. And then we choose polyphase as a source. Okay, so now let's see what Riffer sounds like. So I've attached Riffer here. And okay, so what it's going to sound like when you just open it up and just press the dice and just randomize, it's going to be quite aggressive. This is what it'd be like. It's very kind of Philip Glass style. Now what we can do is a few things, hang on. Let me just bypass that for a second. So one thing we can do, for example, let me just press all. Um, we can minimize the number of notes that pop up. Um, we can, for example, press the sustain and we can go in and we can put a velocity range that's a bit lower. And let's see what that sounds like. We turn the density off as well. So we can put on the infinite mode here. and drag down on the slider here. So we can get something, but it's going to have a very different quality to what Polyface has. I really like Riffer. If you haven't watched my video on it, do watch it. It's a really, really useful tool, and it's much easier to get to grips with, I think, in some ways than Polyphase. Um, but Polyphase, I love for ambient stuff, classical kind of vibe, something a bit jazzy, or maybe softer side of pop. Um, yeah, they're both really good, but they're very, very different what they come up with. I mean, you can tweak either of them. You know, you, you can make polyphase more aggressive and you can make riffer more gentle, but 
in general, if you're going to be doing gentle stuff, you're probably going to be able to dial in what you want much easier with polyphase. And if you want to make dance music, then probably Riffer will be a better choice. Okay, let's move on. Let's walk through the app. Now, first thing I want to point out, follow my mouse button here. Let's go down here to the right and let's see this little volume button over here. This is to turn Polyphase's internal synth on and off, so that's a really important button. Now, this little bunch of cogs here, that is the synth view. And the synth is a very simple but very, very nice little synth. Actually a great synth to just learn a little bit about synthesis on. So we can morph between waveforms here. So here we're getting a mix between noise and sine, sine triangle, triangle and saw, saw and square. Here's just pure square. It's got a few other cool things too, like um, this vintage, for example. This is a kind of wow and flutter. Let me increase the uh, sustain and release a little bit. And it's got some detune as well, this. We can make the effects mono if we want. Spread Waves is a cool one. What Spread Waves will do is, there's actually a synth for each of the four tracks. And let's say, for example, this is set between noise and sign. Um, some of the tracks will be a little bit more noise, and some will be a bit more sign. That's really, really cool. We can pan, or not. Decimate is kind of like a bit crush thing. The amount is very low by default. We can increase it if we want over here in the FX section. Drive is soft clip-in, maybe, or distortion. And then over here we have a few things like a low-pass filter and the resonance for that filter. The delay amount and reverb amount. And then again, if we want to get more control over those things, we actually have to go into the FX. So here we have uh, two delays with separate feedback for each delay. Reverb decay and the reverb filter. If we want a brighter or darker reverb. Now up here on the right, we have a kind of shortcut to the low pass filter. and a shortcut to the wave form. So that's cool, so you don't need to have this synth open to manipulate those things. So you can do that just in here in the main view itself. Really like that. Up here we've got a global transpose. And that'll work for the synth and also when it's just sending out MIDI. Now another cool thing about the synth, look at this. So here we've got this reset, so that'll just put it back to the default. And we can randomize. So you can see here it's randomizing synth settings. Randomizing FX. And if we want something less extreme, we can just morph. These will be smaller changes. It's a really fantastic little synth, actually. Love it. Now, I just clicked stop at the top. Um, so, 
It's linked to the transport in AUM, but we can also control it with its own transport controls. Okay, so that's the synth. Let's look at something else. Okay, so I'm going to do my main walkthrough of the features. So, first of all, right, we've talked a little bit about the MIDI settings here. It's really important to make sure that your outputs are matching where you're trying to send things. Again, if you need help with that, there is some, some stuff about that in the manual. Here is where you load and save presets. And we can save presets as general presets or synth presets or MIDI mapping presets. Again, I won't go through all the little features of that here. There's some cool things like refresh a name or remember the original name that was loaded and so on. I'll leave you to explore those things yourself. Now here in settings, we have this very important humanize function and we also have something where we can change the transpose amount, the default transpose amount. I won't go into all this other stuff here. This will just very quickly just save everything. So here we have our transport, but at the moment we're using the transport in AUM. So if I try and change this BPM, ah, okay, I haven't synced it to AUM, let's check. Okay, let's go to send MIDI clock on polyphase so now polyphase is synced to AUM's clock so this won't make any difference Strange it's not changing here, but you can hear it is actually faster now. Okay. So transport here. Now, the most interesting thing when you first look at the app, obviously you're going to see these four sequencer lanes. So let's look at the first one. The first one is called the master. Why is it called the master? Basically because if we mutate the master, the changes that the master makes will have a chance to be passed on to the followers. That's a really important principle of how polyphase works. And it's this that makes it very, very musical. So at the moment we can see this power button is on, this power button is off. Let me turn it on. So now this one has started playing. Before it was not playing, it wasn't actually producing sound. Now I've turned the power button off, it has stopped producing sound. So its playhead will continue to move, but it's not producing sound. The on button means mutate is on. So if we look at this one, for example, at the moment on is on and the power button is on. That means power button is on, so it's producing sound. And on is on, so it is mutating. It's not looping. If I want this to loop, I just turn this off. And now this is going to loop. So from a musical point of view, turning loops on and then turning mutate on is a really important way to make things more interesting. If you want more of a groove, you're going to want more loops. Maybe, for example, you could loop three of the tracks and let one mutate. So you can play around with all these different kinds of different ways of doing things. So now I turned it on so it's mutating again. This lock button, if I turn this on, then later when I do some randomizations, for example, using things down here, it will not affect that track. But for now, let's unlock it. 
Here we've got a rewind that'll just immediately send it back to the start of its sequence. Over here, we have the rate. And here we have direction. At the moment, it's going forwards and backwards. Now it's going forwards. And now it's going backwards. Fifty percent, this is the chance of randomization. So if we turn this completely down, I'm going to use my finger because the mouse does not work that well. If I turn this completely down, let me say I draw in a note, it's just going to loop it. If I turn this completely up, then there's going to be a lot of change every time it goes back to the start of a sequence. So let's just put that to a kind of medium value. And here's our transpose just for this track. So here's a global transpose. Here's our length. Now, you can see the length of the others is changing. So why is that? That is because over here, this globe is turned on. So when the globe is turned on, certain changes that you make to different parameters, like the rate and the randomization chance and so on, all these things basically, these will be applied globally. And it doesn't mean they'll all become identical. The changes will be relative. So let's say, for example, this has a length of 4, and this has a length of 34. Well, if I reduce this to 3, it doesn't mean that this will become 3. It just means this will go down by 1 as well, right? It'll become 33. Okay, here we have our velocity. And again, because the globe is on, this is being applied globally. But let me turn... Let me bring it down again and let me turn the globe off. Now when I change velocity here, okay, this is 102 and this one is 102. Now if I put this up, 107, this one will stay at 102. It's not being changed anymore because the globe is turned off. I think we've got, we've got a problem here, Stin. Okay, let me just um, click out and check what's happening here, and I'll come back in a second. Okay, so what happened there was that Ravenscroft got overwhelmed uh, with the polyphony. This is a problem. It's not actually a problem of polyphase. It's a problem of Ravenscroft, uh, because even the highest polyphony setting in Ravenscroft, it still can't handle that much polyphony. Uh, a lot of synths and things have this problem. If you get this problem, you need to, uh, for example, reduce the rate in polyphase or reduce the number of notes in a step. So it probably happened because something was just moving too quickly for it. So I reloaded Ravenscroft and it was fixed pretty easily. Okay, now let me just turn the music off a second. So, the rest here, okay, this one, if I increase this, there will be more chance of rest notes, so more chance of spaces. Let me increase the length here a little bit. Now, if I increase repeat, there will be more chance of long notes, because there'll be more chance that, let's say, for example, this creates a D4, there's more chance that the next step will also be a D4. So let me just press play and uh, play around with these a little bit. I'll use my finger. So you see now it's getting very sparse. But if I bring rest down, it's going to start getting very busy.
If I bring repeat up, we've got more chance of notes coming along. But I find this one, it's very temperamental. It, it does work, but it depends a lot on the, the way the other ones are set up. And you need to play around a little bit, really. You know, it's important at this point to say polyphase is not the sequencer for you if you're looking for something where you're really going to go in and have maximum control over everything. The beauty of polyphase is happy accidents. That's really what it's all about. But you do have control over it. You definitely have control over it. But it's not something where you're going to really want to go in and painstakingly draw things in. It's just not that kind of instrument. Okay, if we look then at the next one, the follower. So, um, remember... On here will mean that it will mutate. The difference between a follower and a master is the master generates the mutations and the followers do not generate their own mutations. They just take mutations from the master. Um, so here the rate, or sorry, the random percentage will mean the chance that this will accept new notes generated by the master and take them into its own sequence. Um, so that's a slight difference. And then another thing we have here is phase, and phase will basically offset new notes. So let's say, for example, this, let's say its playhead is here, and let's say at this point it receives a new note from the master, and it's going in this direction. So it's going backwards, and we have a phase value of 2. It means that when it accepts that note, it will not actually play it at this point. It will play it a couple of steps ahead. And then jitter is the percentage chance that notes received from the master will be transposed. So if jitter is at zero, when this receives a new note from the master, it will play it at the same uh, pitch. But with a 100% jitter value, it's going to take a new note from the master, but it's going to totally randomly select a pitch for that note. So again, you know, these things are quite hard to demonstrate. You can play around with these yourself. I don't, I don't want to make the video too long by trying to demonstrate every single feature. Okay, so that's uh, the thing here. So just remember, master settings here are slightly different. These, these followers do not have values for rest and repeat. They take those values from the master. And the master does not have values for phase or jitter. Only the followers have those things. Okay, now... Down here, snapshots. So you can see I've already set up some snapshots here. So let's uh, let's play. So we can use these to basically build up a kind of song. And what we do is, if we like a pattern and we want to save it, we just go down and click on an empty slot. We just long press, and now that has been saved there. And if I want to delete it, I double tap. And if I want to select one, I just single tap. So now it's playing snapshot two. Now it's playing snapshot three. Snapshot four, and so on. So these are ways you can get, again, some control over things, and you can basically build up a kind of song pattern. This is a really great feature, really great feature. Now here, let me just turn this off a second. So here, this is really, really important one to understand. Uh, the only problem is that at the moment, this has this bug, so it's not actually working properly. So the way this should work, and the way if you, if you buy this, or even if you have it already, hopefully a couple of days from now, uh, the fix will be uh, um, out in the App Store, I hope. So at the moment, the problem is that note filter is always on. So the way it should work is if if this is off, then um, it shouldn't pay any attention to this and it should play whatever the notes are here. If the filter is on, it will transpose notes here to make them fit the key and scale. So let's just turn this on for a second. <laughs> Not that it makes any difference. Uh, Ravenscroft. Okay, Ravenscroft has crashed again. You see, that's just too many notes for it. 
So let me um, see that this one's going very fast. That's why it's getting overwhelmed. As I say, this is not a problem with polyphase. Okay. So, at the moment, it's quantizing all the notes to E minor. So if I draw notes in here, if the notes do not fit in the E minor scale, they will be quantized to it. Let's put on another track. And now let me change it to major. I oh, know. Here we go. So now it's E major. So one thing I asked the developer for is, why can't we click on this and directly select the key we want? It's annoying to have to scroll. And particularly because you can't turn this off at the moment because of that bug, it means that it's impossible to jump directly from one key to another, which is really a problem from a musical point of view. Anyway, as I say, this will be fixed soon. And the developer will add the ability to directly choose a key in a future update. It also has custom scales. Actually, I haven't looked into how to set those up. It's probably in the manual. Okay, now... Let's bring the rate of this down a little bit. So what happens with this little music note button? This is a cool one. So what this will do is every time the master returns to the start of its sequence, let me just change this to forward. And let me make it a little bit longer. So every time it comes back here, the chord here will change. So with this on, it will basically do chord progressions. That's really cool. Okay, let's move on and uh, using a different instrument, let's look at the random section. So we're near the end of the video, everyone. If you haven't done it already, I'd really appreciate it if you give this a thumbs up. I've put a lot of work into this video, so that's one way you can pay me back. I've been working on this for days due to these various bugs and things and just wrapping my head around this app. It's actually an insane amount of work. This is one of the, the toughest videos that I had to make, but I felt I wanted to stick with it because I love this app. Love it, love it. All right, so we've got beautiful harp sound from Roly Equator 2, a desktop synth here that I'm again sending MIDI to from Polyphase on my iPad. And we'll look at this here. So reset all. Let's say, for example, um, you open up a preset and then you make changes. If you want to just go back to the original way the preset was before you change stuff, you can just use this reset all button. Now, random settings, that will randomize these things. So just take a look here, for example, while I press the random settings button. And you can see various things are changing. But there are also some things that don't change, like, for example, the length doesn't change, right? Now here we have randomized rate. So pay attention to rate here. Now, don't forget the importance of the lock buttons if you want to lock certain tracks. There's also a global lock and unlock over here. So if I press this lock, everything's locked. Press this, everything's unlocked. All right, random direction. Well, you can guess what that does. That's gonna randomize these things. Randomize chance, that'll randomize these. Randomize transpose, that will randomize these. Randomize length, that'll randomize these. Randomize phase, so remember, only followers have phase. Randomize velocity. 
Okay, so let's just play with those a little bit. Now these things here, this will shift notes backwards and forwards, and this will shift the pitch of notes up and down. So these two are time-based and this is pitch-based. Okay, now over here, so here we can Randomize either using Euclidean geometry based randomization or by using Marcos, the developer's own randomization algorithms in here. Clone Master is a cool one. Sorry, Clone Master, I should say, really. So clone Master, everything will copy the master. But of course, if we're mutating, then they will start to change again as well. So that's a really cool thing to use musically, to just suddenly kind of bring everything into line and get rid of too much craziness. Really nice. Now, don't forget, everyone, of course, you can lock some things. Like, for example, I could turn... Let's say the second one, I can turn that off and I could draw something in here and then I could press lock and then I could randomize and these things will randomize but the second one will stay locked. This is a very important trick for musical results so you're not getting too much randomness. Generally with music you're usually going to want some elements that stay the same and other elements that are changing, right? Like think about a band, think about the drummer, you know, keeping the backbeat. Extend notes. So look at this one, for example, this third one. So basically what this will do is take away rests. Swap. Okay, um, look, for example, at... Yeah, let's look at... Let me turn this. Okay, look at this pattern. And now if you notice that jumped to number three here. So this will swap the patterns around between the different tracks. Shift will move things backwards or forwards. Morph will change the pitches. Same notes will just make everything on that, on each track the same. Press random sequence again. Now reverse. Look for example at track one and see how every time I press reverse, what's on the right side gets mirrored on the left side and vice versa. And prune is a cool one. So let me just draw in a bunch of notes. If I press prune, it will thin the notes out. So this is a good way to make a busy passage more mellow, kind of like get a nice little breakdown. So let's just stop this a second. And let me just summarize what I like and what could be improved, etc, etc, about this app. Ah, now. I just realized I haven't gone over all these tracks on the left. So let me just recap on the ones that I have done and do for the first time the ones that I haven't. So the wrench, um, this sets the CC values for this track for when we want to manipulate it using the CCs. And it also has this constant note function where we can fix the pitch of all the notes in this 
to a certain pitch if we want. That can be really useful for sequencing drums. So for example, we can assign this to a bass, a kick, and so on and so on. Um, I also just want to mention this repeats MIDI. What this will do if we turn, the, if, if this is off and it's off by default, then what will happen is when the sequencer puts three notes which are identical one after the other, let's say for example we have a D3, a D3, and a D3, normally what will happen is those will be played as one long D3 note. But if we put on repeats MIDI, instead it will play them as three separate notes. So it'll play it like ba, 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 instead of just ba. Okay, so that's what that does. Now, the next one, the link, this is really important one musically. So, if we look here, we have sequences of different lengths. So this is four, eight, and these two are 16. And if link is off, each one will complete its length. But if we turn this on, then every time the master goes back to the start, all the others will go back to the start, even if they haven't completed their journey. So that'll look like this. See the way they're all synced there? So this is a very important one musically to play around with for different effects. Now this one, if we look here, if I turn this on, uh, of course, typical all the notes disappear then. Well, basically, um, let me make this longer. So if I turn this on, it basically gives this a smaller range. That's why these appear larger. When I turn this off, there is more range here, like this will range for several octaves. When this is on, it might just range for an octave or something like that. Now the globe we talked about a lot, but just to recap, the globe will mean that changes here, for example, if I just change this, then changes will be applied globally. Let's look at what that's like again. So I turn on the globe, come over here, and I change, for example, the velocity of this one. So now this one is 70, and this one is 70. They're all 70. I do this. Now they're all changing. If I turn the globe off, then when I bring this down, this one will come down, but the others will not. The hand, if you remember, okay, the hand is turned off. I go over here, I change, for example, the length from 16 to 15, 14, and so on. But if I turn the hand on, now these values will just double or halve. So this has a lot of musical value. And then we have sustain. So sustain on or off. If you're getting problems with a synth or a piano you're playing into not having enough polyphony, then turning sustain off can be a good idea. And here we have the time of the sustain. Which goes all the way up to infinite, which is basically just as long as the instrument can sustain for. Okay, so let's go on to our summary. So, really there's a lot, a lot, a lot to like. If you like ambient stuff, if you want to do things that have a bit of a classical leaning, or even kind of more gentle pop music and things like that, or maybe things that are a little bit jazzy or something. Basically, stuff that isn't um, EDM and that kind of vibe. I think this is seriously one of the best sequencers that you could get. It sounds extremely human, extremely human. Um, what else? I mean, it's really, really deep. So I think you're getting a lot of value when you buy this app. You know, you could honestly get a lot of use out of this and really, really enjoy diving into it. Um, over time, I personally find that there are a lot of apps that come out that have just a few controls on them. And sometimes for me, I feel these apps are just not that interesting. They might do something well, but I personally like stuff that's a little bit deeper and rewards putting in time. 
I feel that apps like this are incredible value for money. I mean, it's even got a synth, for God's sake. And the synth is really nice sounding and a great way to learn about synthesis. What else? I love the look of this. It's a really, really pleasing interface. Um, I think a lot of thought has gone into it. It's really, really well designed. Really well designed. And I'm not going to name any names, but there are some apps that do generative MIDI. And maybe what they produce is great, but the interface is just absolutely terrible. This interface is seriously a joy to work with. So I really love that. I love that. Um, I love that it's got the snapshots, so you can build up a song there. Um, it's got quite a good number of different scales and things, and it does have the custom there. As I say, I'm not really sure how to customize scales. Um, really no idea. Yeah, I must check that in the manual. Um, so that's a really cool feature. I love the way it's got so many different randomization options. A lot of things that I would never have thought of, like the Clone Master, for example, things like that. And the way that it has the on button for morphing and the power button for sound, and the way you can play with these and turn morphing on on some and turn it off on others, you can get really interesting results. Particularly, for example, if you leave the master on so it's morphing, but you turn it off and then you send its notes to other things, and then you start playing with settings down here, you can get some really interesting results. Um, let me see. Uh, I love the fact that it's got undo and redo. That is brilliant. Really brilliant. I think almost every app should have undo and redo. It would be incredibly helpful. Incredibly helpful. What else? Um, oh yeah, so it's got the CCs, right? Yeah, we didn't even look at that. Well, hmm. Let me turn on the synth for a second. Okay, so if we go up here, we can see, for example, okay, let's say the synths FX, the low pass frequency, low pass filter frequency, sends on CC96. Okay, so let me draw a line for that. I'll do it here. CC 96. So now the low pass filter of the synth is being modulated. Let's take a look at it. You see how it's moving around? So this is super cool. I love how it's got its CCs built in. do I not like? Um, well, I don't like the manual. Like I said, the manual has no pictures. It's hard to find things. Could definitely be a better manual. Um, no Ableton link. Okay, it's got uh, that MIDI clock, but no Ableton link. Ableton link would be nice. Um, it'd be really great if it was audio unit, but as I say, for this particular thing, it's not too bad. I accept that it's interrupt audio. When I make a session in AUM using this, if I want to remember what I was using, I just make a note here, uh, you know, in polyphase, remember to use blah 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 preset. So it's not ideal, but it's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, what else? Well, the main issue for me is the bugs at the moment, because really I have been wasting a lot of time uh, trying to deal with these bugs and trying to figure out what is causing the crashes and stuff that I sometimes get. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. I hope those get fixed. Um, anything else? Anything else? Hmm. I think that's it, really. Yeah. Um, overall, for me, the pros outweigh the cons. Um, I would recommend this to people who are interested in generative MIDI without hesitation. Um, I'm pretty sure, I'd li I hope so anyway, the developer does seem very responsive, so I'm hoping that the issues that I've been having recently are going to be fixed. I think it's an absolutely wonderful app. 
So, thanks for watching everyone, good luck, and I'll see you in the next video.